YouTube, it's Daniel the Rocket Noob again, and we're back with the Superbird by Quest Aerospace. And I have just been reading the instructions, and I found some very interesting things that I wanted to share with you. So it's important to always read the instructions before you start building a rocket, especially if you're new and you've never built one before. You might find some things, some steps that you'll need to consider uh, before you get to them, and you might find some inconsistencies, and that's what I found in this kit. So, uh, first of all, I don't know how old this uh, this kit is. I don't know how long the Superbird has been around. From the uh, the sort of flaws in the Xerox thing here, I'm going to assume this is a pretty old kit, and I think some things have changed over time. First of all, uh, one of the parts listed is an 8.5 inch white payload tube, and if you remember from the first video, we have a red payload tube. So it looks like that color is a uh, new addition, and as I said, I'm probably going to scuff that up, fill in those spirals, and then repaint it. So that's just a bit of an interesting uh, note. Another part that we are supposed to have, and you can't really see it here, probably, but it's uh, part number J. It is a paper disc. Well, this kit doesn't come with a paper disc. It does come with a plastic disc, however. This is going to go into the bottom half of the coupler, and it's going to form the payload section uh, bulkhead, essentially. Um, the reason that it's important that this is plastic instead of paper is because although the instructions don't state that the coupler is paper, from what I've read, I assume the coupler used to be made of paper too, and that's going to affect what kind of adhesive or glue we use to attach these two parts together. The instructions say to glue the paper disc into the coupler using white glue. Wood glue would have also worked assuming that both of these parts were paper, but they're plastic and white glue is not going to adhere plastic to plastic. It's not going to adhere paper to plastic either. So we're going to want to uh, change what we're going to be doing there. I'll be either using plastic cement or maybe some thick CA cyanoacrylate uh, super glue essentially. All right, uh, then we come to the motor mount assembly, and it's a pretty typical motor mount assembly. You've got your hook, you've got your, uh, your tube, you stick the uh, hook into the, you cut a little slit, stick the hook into the tube, and then you go to the next page where you start to assemble the shock cord and... Uh, centering rings, but here's something very interesting. If you look here, it appears that there is a bit of tape around the motor hook. However, it doesn't say anywhere to put tape around the motor hook. If you built rockets before, you know that you need something to keep that hook from just flopping around left and right. And if you've ever built Estes kits, you know that they come with this little ring that slips over the motor hook to hold it in place. Um, tape would work just fine, but if you've never built a rocket before and you don't know to look out for this, you might see that picture and think, oh, that's that's weird, I wonder what that is. Um, now, this is left over from a kit where I uh, upgraded the motor mount, so I have a spare one of these. I could use tape, but I'm probably just gonna use one of that. Also going to change out, as I said before, the yellow tube, which is a little, a little bit too squishy, for an Estes motor tube that I never used. All right, so that is the motor hook assembly. Uh, then we come to another part. As you see, they give you a little guide here, a little uh, ruler, and it's really, I guess, just for scale. The interesting thing, however, is that if you measure it really carefully, you see that the inches, and you're probably not gonna see this on my camera, but if you measure this really carefully, you see that the inches don't match up. So one inch on this paper is larger than an actual inch in reality. So my five inches here don't match up with the five inches on the paper. Well, why is this important? It might have something to do with our thin marking guide. Now, I've built Quest kits in the past and I've found that sometimes the thin marking guide is either too large or too small for the body tube. And what happens then is when you use that to uh, mark where your fins are gonna go, if you glue them where you've marked it, 
you might find that the fins are not evenly spaced all the way around the rocket. We want them to be about a, we want them to be 120 degrees apart from each other with three fins. And you might find that they are slightly too far apart um, and with the first and second and second and third fin. And then the third and first fin are too close together because this might be too large. We're going to check that out. And if that's true, we will make our own fin marking guide. So that's another interesting thing. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, yes. So <laughs> here's an interesting bit here. Uh, for attaching the coupler to the payload tube. You glue the coupler into the payload tube. Uh, one of the instructions says to take the nose cone and use that to stretch out the payload tube. Now, if you've ever built rockets with paper couplers, you know that sometimes they're a little bit tight. Um, this isn't very tight. I can put this in either end. It's going to be just fine. I don't need to do that. Um, so if you're building the Superbird, don't do this. You're, you're going to distort the rocket. Furthermore, if I did have a paper coupler and it was a little too tight, just sand the coupler. There's no need to distort the nice look of your rocket by stretching it out with your nose cone. That's just, that's just silly. All right. All right. Uh, finally, an interesting thing is uh, the way the coupler is supposed to be attached to the shock cord. So as I showed you, the shock cord in a lot of quest kits comes with an, a Kevlar part and an elastic part. And usually these things are tied together. Well, at least in the old-fashioned kit when you had the paper disc, what you do is you attach the shock cord to the motor mount, you pass that through the end of the rocket, and then, according to these instructions, you use the elastic bit to make a kind of loop here for the payload coupler. Well, if you do that, I mean, look at the length of this uh, elastic, sorry, this Kevlar cord compared to the body tube. If I did that, that means that this Kevlar, which is very stiff, would only stick out of the rocket by about that much. And that's no good, because what's going to happen is the rocket's going to go up, uh, your ejection charge is going to go off, and then with a short shock cord, especially a really stiff one like this, it's going to pull against the body tube and that could rip into the body tube. So we are not going to be doing that at all. I am going to be using this Kevlar for mounting a shock cord and I'll show you how to do that when I get to it. All right. So, oh, there's one final thing that I just remembered. Uh, so when assembling the motor uh, mount, let's see here. So you've got your hook in there, right? You have got your, your tape or your mylar ring on there. You forget about the, uh, the whole shock cord attachment there. And then you put your, uh, your centering rings on. Now, this hook, where did the hook go? So the hook's gonna stick out about uh, like that, right? And you're gonna have your centering ring about a half inch on there. This doesn't give a lot of room for bending that hook away to get the motor out. If you've built a lot of Estes rockets, you know that one of the centering rings, the aft centering ring, has a little notch in there. And these rings don't come with notches. So you could really end up bending your, uh, your, uh, your hook permanently, and then it'll have a hard time retaining the motor after a few flights. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll make a little notch there in the aft centering ring, and we'll fix that right up. So I think this is going to be a, a nice rocket. It, it doesn't look like much now with just a collection of parts, but I think this is one of those kits that once it's built, it's going to be impressive and bigger than it looks right now. Uh, just a few things that you have to watch out for when you build certain rocket kits. Sometimes the instructions are old and outdated. Sometimes they're a little sloppy. Um, so it just it pays to pay attention uh, and make, make note of things that don't make a lot of sense. All right. See you next time.